Hey everyone, I'm recording this in April 2024. This will be my most in-depth tutorial to date on how to create this morphing animation effect in layers, starting from a Photoshop file, then Phantomorph, then compositing in After Effects. In this one, I go through 15 different animated features so you can see all the details and various ways of how I use this technique. I've previously done another tutorial with this technique that uses a flat image with only a few composite layers and After Effects. You can see that one on my YouTube channel and I'll drop the link here in the description. Now let's dive in. Okay, first I think it's worth looking at why working in layers is beneficial versus a flat image. Now this was a really quick production done in another application called Corel Photo Mirage and it can work really great, you can finesse it, but I just wanna show the difference between, for example, if you look at the deer here, and all of the, even though I've masked out the deer, it's still morphing along the edge. I could put in anchor points, but basically you can see how everything's blending together and there's no separation between the layers. Now I use a lot of different metaphysical shapes and auras and, layers that are transparent on top of the bottom foundational layer and I want those animating at separate speeds and directions from other parts of the image and so that's why I work in layers. So you can see what the project looks like in uh, Corel Photo Mirage here and it is a, a lot quicker to use when you're dropping in things like these directional arrows um, you can just drop in the arrows. So it is beneficial in some circumstances to use this, but because again, I'm so proficient with the other application, which is Abrasoft Phantom Morph, this one here, I, and it allows me to work in layers. That's the one we're going with. Also for exporting in layers, Phantom Morph works a lot better. It's, um, you can export and transparencies. It just gives you a lot more options. And the cost is relatively similar. So for Phantom Morph, I use the deluxe version. It's a hundred bucks. You don't need a subscription and you can keep it like that forever. So it's, that's again, why we would want to look at it in layers. So before we get into the animation part, I want to take a look at the Photoshop file and how it's set up, how the layers are set up for animating. So as you can see in the layer view on the right hand side here, there's all this color coordination going on and I've mapped out the colors according to an understanding that I have about how I want to do it. Typically the red layers are foundational layers that could just be added and built back up in After Effects later. They won't be animated or they might become part of the background scene. Blue and violet are typically more etherical layers and green is other features. So to get to the foundational layer, I am going to basically delete, rather turn off all these other layers, except for the red layers, see how they look and then I have to decide on what will be the base animation of this image. Okay, so you can see here I've stripped it down to almost entirely the foundational base painting layer, but there are a few layers on top. I actually might even just turn that one off. Basically the idea is to get anything out of the way of what would be your foundational animation. So I have all these fractal lines on the trees and those are going to be the direction that is going to be animated on the trees. And so I'll go through that process for each different layer type. Now I'm just gonna jump to the folder to show you where I've already done that. So for example, Here's a foundational layer where I've put directional arrows of where I want to animate. Now you can see there's a bit of difference between this one and this Photoshop, ver this, this version of Photoshop, and that's because I hadn't even actually done this one totally correctly. So sometimes after doing the arrows, I'll come back in and adjust it. And then you can see in this folder, 
I'll just go through and you can see that I've separated a lot of the different layers and I've put directional arrows and some instructions of how I want to do it. Now anything on a back black background like this will typically have a screen layer, meaning I can use the black background to my advantage for animating, it makes it a bit more easier to see, and then it will just be a screen blending mode in After Effects. Some of them have to have multiple output layers where there's actually an alpha layer and and a black uh, background layer so I can see how to animate it. So for example, this one, you can see the checkerboard background that has an alpha channel to it. So when I get to animating that feature, it will make more sense. And also just note that you can see it's kind of a bit hard to tell. I'll go back to the image, but there's extra there's actually extra around this because what I've learned is to adapt for especially um, features that are along the edge. If I want them to continue animating off screen, you have to give more of a border. So you can see this hard line along the bottom. So I've actually cropped this out to have more border. I used to just do every single image as though it was the entire scene, but really that actually takes up a lot of extra space, especially with the animation output. This is a 5,000 pixel wide image, and it's good to start in the highest resolution possible. I'm just going to go back to that. Okay, so those ones there on the ground that I just turned on, see how they're on the edge? And then when I go back to this, and I preview this, you can see again that that's on the edge. And I actually have a few different versions of it that I will be animating. So you have to export each layer in an understanding of how you're going to build the layers back up in After Effects. And again, this will make more sense as I go along. So now after checking out all the layers in Photoshop, I'm going to jump to the end of the project to show you what it looks like in After Effects with all the layers built up. And then as you're going through the animation, hopefully it will make more sense what the end point is actually going to be. So. I originally often start off with a two second loop. And so this first composition in After Effects is two seconds. And then I pre comp some of that and bring it into a four second loop. So some of the features are animating within a four second loop. And then in the end, I end up with a an eight second loop here. And that's just because some of the features are animating over an eight second time period. Most of it's happening within the two second composition and some of the features are brought into the four second one to be accentuated or or they're not even existing in the two second composition. So for example, here is, if I solo out, this is the background layer. This is the foundation that everything builds up on. And then you can see everything there and then if I just slide along, you can see some of those features animating. Now, for example, in this eight second comp, there's one feature that is animating over the whole eight seconds, which is, I'm calling this the auras layer. Now it doesn't include the auras of everything, but it's just some of the features. And that's what that looks like. So you can kind of imagine how that breaks down into the four second composition and the two second composition. It's all there. So for example, you could see some of those in here. If I go to, let's see if I solo out this layer, you can see one of those there, but in the eight second composition, I'm just bringing more emphasis to it. So all the different layers, are within this and it starts off from the Photoshop composition. Now I'm going to go back into animating the very first layer, which is the foundational layer. I'm going to start there and then I'll start to explain more about how this After Effects composition is built up as this tutorial goes along. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this Photoshop file now before we get into the animation aspect of it. 
So I'm at the foundational layer of where we'll start. And when I'm exporting files from the main layers document, I like to duplicate the document just to, so I don't save it and mess up the original. And then I will flatten this and I will save it as a high resolution JPEG and then bring that into Abrasoft Phantomorph. So now let's go into Phantomorph. I'm gonna start from scratch. It's more where the, the highlights are. A little bit of these ripples going out. And you can see I've isolated the other features that aren't gonna be animated. We'll see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. There's a there's just a little bit of movement there. Sometimes I add some other elements to the water and After Effects to just make it look a bit more like water. And I think this foundational image is done. There's a few other areas that I might adjust. Oops. And we've got everything animating. Oops, except for one little area over here. All right. It's looking pretty smooth. So now let's dive into something more complex. This is, these are kind of more the, the most complex feature of my animations. I usually use hexagons in all the images. And this one's gonna be a doozy. Going with it and if I encounter any other difficult areas, I'll show you what that looks like. Like see here, the, on the, there's these overlapping ones. It's really just about choosing which way for it to go. And with these, again, if it's if if it's kind of if I generally try to follow some kind of direction that there it's either rippling out or inwards and it gets a little kind of complicated uh, doing the animation. I'm going to just show you what the animation looks like. Let's zoom in here. So here you can kind of see just the smooth rippling pattern. Let's change the direction. And I made that into a composition so that I could then use it as a track mat. And so some of them were basically a one second loop and some of them here were 60 frames per second, almost two second loops. Now when I go back into this composition, I'm not seeing that later layer, but what, what I've done is created something else. So if I just solo it out here, and if I turn off the track mat, you can actually just see this is all that's happening. It's really just a solid layer that goes out. And now here we are in the eight second loop. So what I've done is taken the four second loop, stacked it a couple times, made the composition a bit longer just in case I wanted to play with that, but decided to keep it around eight seconds. And ultimately it's pretty similar, but what I wanted to do is have a version where it gets all of the auras on the trees and everything get brighter. So you can kind of see it's, it goes through one pulse and then on the second one, everything gets brighter. So I'll just go back and forth and I just boom. And then it goes back and it, so it just loops in that. So if I open up what the auras look like here, this is it, I just chose specific layers and looped them. And then all I did in the eight second stack was that so this is what the completed piece looks like at regular speed I ended up adding a bit of a so there is a subtle pulse that goes the same as the radials around the deer coming out from the sort of sun in the center there but it's a bit more subtle. And then also on this eight second loop, these Amanita mushrooms down here also glow. So it's all the sort of geometrical auras and then the mushrooms. And that's a wrap on this one. 